can't be serious, and it's out now. Y'all gotta check it out. So where does the title of the book come from? It's awesome. I wanted a, I wanted a title that captures uh, basically a double entendre in, you know, when I, when I decided I wanted to be an actor, my guidance counselor said, um, <laughs> uh, she said, you, oh, I said, I said, I want to be an actor and then I want to do something in public service. And she said, you can't have your cake and eat it too. And I was like, really? Oh, I hate those people. Like, as a 16 year old, you're going to yeah. tell me that, that nope, your, your life possibilities your are limited. Dream, they're, Come on. They're, yeah, <laughs> there's a limit to your dreams. Right, so there was that. And then when I, uh, at, you know, post, like, done a bunch of stoner movies and played a doctor on TV and all of this. Love those. Thank you. Yes, I love them yes, too. Yes, yes. But go off to. To, uh, to work at the to work at the White House, and it's a similar thing. Oh, you're crazy! Why would you do that? You can't do that. You're known for playing a stoner. And but the only people who really focused on that were, were journalists, you know, because they're yeah. trying to get like the clickbait thing. Because they just want a clickbait story. Exactly. Yeah, and I, I get that that's their yeah. gig, but but the title of the book. I don't. That's not real journalism. <laughs> it's not. Yeah. But... And I said it that... there. It's out there. <laughs> and I backed you up. Yeah. On it. Yeah. So the, the title of the book, I want it to be a play on both of those, both of those things that you know yeah. that you can't be serious, but you actually can. There's a time to be serious, and there's a time to be completely ridiculous. And what a horrible thing for your guidance counselor yeah, to say. Yeah, well, like, she's dead now. Yeah. So. <laughs> so wait, is it this? This is perhaps my favorite thing in the book. <laughs> is it true that you almost took the president to a strip club? All right. I, 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 it's a. It's a. What? It's a <laughs> It's a stretch to I say almost it. took, but I, I, I did commit. Uh, and here's mm. what happened. I, it was my like second week there, third week there. <laughs> right? I'm new to DC, I needed a haircut, and I just went to the closest place to my apartment, uh, right outside of DuPont Circle in DC. And this guy Rodolfo was the barber, and he recognized me and said, I love your movies, I heard that you're working at the White House, and just talks my ear off. And I'm looking at my Blackberry, trying to do work emails while he's cutting my hair, and also trying to be nice. And he says, you know, uh, I own a, a tapas bar that you should check out. And I said... Ooh, uh, I love tapas. I, me too. Yeah. And <laughs> I was getting hungry, so I said, that's great. And he said, you should actually bring your, your office, the White House Office of Public Engagement, to my, to my tapas bar. And I was like, oh, sure, I mean, maybe. <laughs> and then I think you all know where this is going. Oh, and, my and, God. and then he says, well, you should bring the president too. <laughs> And people would say those things all the time, and then he'd said, you know, it, it, it's all on the House. And I said, you know, there are a lot of ethics rules at the Obama White House. We can't accept free anything. Yeah. Why don't you give me your card, and maybe I can bring everybody for a holiday party or something. We'll rent out your, your bar. So he gives me his card. I put it in my pocket. Bar? I get home. I put my phone, wallet, keys on my desk, and I'm like, oh, yeah, this dude's card. And I look at it. It says, Rodolfo's Ladies Topless Bar. Which is amazing. And I... Looks like. Which is amazing. So I had to go in the next day, tell my boss what I did, because I could only imagine that the Politico or TMZ story was oh. Kumar promises, like, <laughs> strip club experience for White House staff. Who's bringing the ones? Who's, right, yeah. Uh, it was fine, and he, he was very gracious, and nothing ever oh came of that. But, yeah, I definitely put my foot in my mouth. No, yeah, it was second uh, week in, too. Second week Congratulations. Thank you. Way Thank to you. leave some footprints. I, I do need to say that. <laughs> I tried, you were asking about the title of the book before, and this is one of the things, like, I tell that story for the first time And people are like, you book. can't be serious. And people are you can't be serious. Yeah. And then I also walk through things like voter suppression and, and uh, outreach to young voters and what it's yeah. like to register in the history of our country. And I just love that people have been responding to both of those things yeah. in the same kind of chapter. I uh, love that you have all of that in one book. That, what a great, what really a, fun. that's why it took really four fun. years, but like, I'm just yeah. saying it, it, it seems like it has a lot of heart, has a lot of humor, has a lot of facts. Um, yeah, and it's it's really good. And you let walls down. That's really cool. Um, and you didn't need to, though, just so you know. Like, I was a fan regardless. Thank if you. I Thank you. No, yeah. Knew who you liked. Thank um, you. The Cow's book is called You Can't Be Serious, and it's out now. You've got to go check it out.